In question six, we have a sheet folded in half a number of times. H of X, so a function in terms of X is two to the power of X. And we can see here a table below, fill in the table below. So two, four, eight, it's doubling each time. 16, 32, 64. Just check two to the power of six on your calculator is equal to 64 if you can't see the pattern itself and two to the power of five and then your knowledge of the main and range d and or the way i taught it in class x comes before y d comes before or so the domain is your x values we can also write h of x as y equals so we have our y values and our x values so the domain my x one to six one two three four five six the corresponding y values underneath two four eight sixteen thirty two and sixty four and then work out the least number of folds to have more than 500 this is just let's keep going here well, you could write two to the power of trial and error on your calculator the ones i've told you to remember are two to the power of 10 because it begins with 10 1024 and two to the power of five is 32 and if you remember these two you can work your way up or down to whatever you need so two to the power of nine would be 512 so therefore we will have nine folds here Part D, we're asked to work out the number of layers after 12 folds, so that will be 2 to the power of 12 is equal to, without the calculator, 2 to the power of 10, 1024, double it to get 2048, and double it again to get 4096, 4096, and we're asked for it in scientific notation, A by 10 to the power of N, so you guys know it always has to be between 1 and 10, which you're told here. 4.096 by 10 to the power of how many places have we moved the decimal from here into here is three places so I'm just going to my decimal 10 to the power of three explain what is meant by the following statement in terms of layers folds and layers so h14 is when we put 14 in for x so that will be 14 Falls will be greater than 10,000 and the 10,000 will be the layers and then put a tick in the correct box to show what kind of pattern is made by the number of layers and then just tick one box only you're told don't start ticking loads of boxes and scribbling them out in a rough work off to the side just have a little think about this question Linear, quadratic, so first difference, we understand linear, quadratic, second difference. Exponential would be power, and then none of these. So our pattern is two to the power of n, so it's exponential, we have a power. And we could say power as the indice, or doubles each time for your justification. So we know that we have a power, it's an exponential equation. Um, in this form, obviously there's a power in a quadratic equation, but because it doubles each time here, maybe you just write down doubles each time. It's not quadratic, it's exponential. And then there is one more part of this question, G and H. All double parts were 10, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, so 40 for this question overall. Part G. Kind of understanding words after a certain number of folds there are k layers so let's say it's k so the next one will be we're going to double it it's going to be 2k if we double 2k we'll get 4k regardless of what k is if we double it again we'll get 8k and this is the question here after three more folds and the answer in terms of k so you kind of start writing down your knowledge nearly before reading the question so 8k will be the answer here and after a certain number of folds there's 2 to the power of p layers 2 to the power of p how many layers will there be after three more folds so we're looking at indices here and there's a bit of a clue give your answer in the form 2 to the power of m where m is in terms of p so 2 to the power of m 
something something there's going to be a p up here so two to the power of p is what we're starting with so regardless of what two to the power of p is we're going to double it so it's going to be two by two to the power of p we're going to double it again similar to up here i'm multiplying by two each time and then on three folds and doubling it again so in algebraic terms using indices 2 to the power of p by 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 to the power of the rule for indices is that we add them so p plus 3 and that's 2 to the power of m where we have m is in terms of p so there's no m m just in terms of p here m is p plus 3 that's m is equal to p plus 3 m in terms of p question 7 5 marks for a 10 for b junas has an unlimited supply of 5 euro notes and 2 euro coins well wouldn't you love to be junas fill in the table below to show three different ways in which you can use these to make exactly 27 euros way one is given to us one five pound note and 11 twos so way two well a bit of trial and error here if he has two five pound notes that's 10 and that would leave 17 which he can't make so it's going to have to look like an odd number if he had three five pound notes that would be 15 not 12 15 I'm thinking 12 it would leave 12 which would be six twos so that works for us it looks like it has to be odd three fivers 15 and six twos is 12 15 and 12 and then does our pattern work is it five fivers would be 25 leaving one two so it is if our instinct is correct here the even number of five pound notes won't work explain how we could use this supply of five pound notes and two euro coins to make every whole number value of money greater than three euro i.e to make n euro for every n is an element of natural numbers and n is greater than three so a lot of information here but what they want really is explain so let's use maths always to explain so every number greater than three so mathematically if he has twos and fives can he make four the first number greater than three two by two is four he can he can make five by just having one fiver he can make six so we should see a pattern here three times two will be six he can make seven by having one fiver and one two he can make eight by having four twos he can make nine by one fiver and two twos and so on so i think mathematically you could explain it like this saying that you can make every even number and every odd number greater than three and that would be enough information to explain question 7b 8a the classic solve the following equation clue on the question give your answer correct to two decimal places some of you call this the minus b formula or the quadratic formula this is the clue on the question the two decimal places minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a take your time with this question write down a b and c a is equal to 1 b is equal to minus 4 that's important because this minus in front will change it to a plus c is equal to minus 7 and from here it's calculator use you can type minus minus 4 if you want into your calculator but i think if you're going to write down two minuses change it to a plus then we have the plus and the minus part which we're going to type into our calculator separately b squared you can put in the minus four just be careful to use the bracket minus b sorry minus four squared minus four ac so minus four by a by c if you get an error on your calculator you may have a minus inside the square root just double check your workings all divided by 2a which is two times one so type this into your calculator with the plus create the fraction symbol and then type it in with a minus and get your two answers which are 
correct the two decimal places, 5.32 for the positive one. And I'll check twice, minus 1.32 for the negative ones. These are my two solutions for x. You could write x equal to for each individual one, or you could just write it like this. So the quadratic formula was worth a grand total of 15 marks. So take your time with it. Question 8b, if you have a good knowledge of quadratics, this is easy. We have the solutions of the equation, this one here. And we're told that x equals minus 1 and x equals 2. <clears throat> the table below shows three graphs, and one of these is this guy. Well, the solutions are the roots. So let's have a look at the graphs. So we're looking for roots of 2 and minus 1. So the first one works, 2 and minus 1. One of them also should have 2 and minus 1 yet. They're trying to confuse us. B works, and C doesn't work. It's minus 1, <coughs> minus 2 and 1. So it's A or B. We're now down to a 50-50, which is what I've always told you to try and do. So what else do we know about this graph of x squared minus x minus 2? The y-intercept is going to be minus 2. We have it in A, and OK, great, we don't have it in B. So we can say roots correct for my justification. That will be enough. Well, we could also say y axis intercept correct. And that's our justification. If we can spell the word correct properly, that's an effort at it. Question nine is about a group of friends making a video on YouTube. They know that they will be paid 15 euros for each 10,000 views. Work out how many views they would need to be paid 45. Well, 15 for 10,000, just multiply 3 by 15 would be your 45. So 3 by 10,000. They would accept the answer with no work here, but I always encourage you, show your workings. 30,000 views for this YouTube video. It's obviously not about maths. How much will they be paid for 80,000? We were dealing with multiply, now we're going to be dealing with divide. 6 by 15, if we want to approximate, will be 90. So 60,000 views will be 90 euros. So let's divide 80,000 by 15, and we should get... And I hope you see it, I'm looking at this backwards. So let's go back and just read the question carefully. It's easier than it seems. 80,000 views is 15 by 8. Obviously, 120 euros. Be careful to read the question properly. How much will they be paid for one view? Okay, so if it's 15 for 10,000 for one view, it will be 15 divided by 10,000. And that would just move the decimal four places. So... 0 0.1234, is that right? It was here, and now it's four places back. That's right. So that would be in cent or in euro, which that would be one cent if there was a zero one, so less than one cent per view. Part D, write an expression in X for the profit in euro they would receive for X views. So well, what is profit? What is profit? Profit is how much? Cost is involved. It's our revenue, actually, the way around, isn't it? How much profit we make is based on how much we take in revenue minus how much we outlay. And what does it tell us? It does not cost anything to post, but it costs 70 to make. So, whatever revenue we have, and 70 is what we're dealing with here. So, it's going to be a combination of the two parts what did we get the last time we got how much revenue is zero zero one five per video multiplied by the amount of videos we make so this is an expression in x for the profit there's seven people in the group they divide the profit from the video evenly and they each get 200 in profit so write an expression in x to represent this information and then work out the value of x in e part 2.
So if they get 200 each, and there's seven of them, they're making 1400 euros. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber. So let's see how many views you need to make 200 quid. So 0.015x, this is this part down here, minus 70 is equal to this 1400. So 0 0.0015, I left out a zero here. X is equal to 1470. They were zeros above. So X is equal to the 1470 divided by the 0 0.0015. This gives a grand total of 980,000 views, nearly a million views to be a YouTube millionaire, but you're only making 200 euro. So get studying and get a proper career.